So I've committed to writing at least one Q per week for the entire year, and I've done pretty well. I've, I've actually exceeded that as far as the average, but between deadlines and gigs and making YouTube videos, somewhere along the line, I lost sight of the fact that this, this is supposed to be fun. We're going to talk about that, as well as unpack a sneaky spy cue on my week 50 vlog check-in. What is happening, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Welcome to week 50 of my 52 cues, where I am committing to writing at least one cue per week for the entire year, coming on to YouTube, talking about it, talking about my process, doing a breakdown of the queue, but also talking about things that are going on in the industry, in my life or career or whatever. I'm so glad that you have found me, however you found me. I sincerely appreciate it. And I want to give a special word of thanks to my Patreon patrons whose support helps keep this channel and all things going. If you want to know more about that, there will be more information at the end of the video. If you want to skip over the vlog portion, check out the timestamps in the description below. Uh, and um, we're going to be talking about this cue called Sneak Snake Snuck. <laughs> It's a dumb title, but publisher liked it. Uh, it is a uh, jazzy spy cue featuring, once again, my good friend Brandon Miller on bass. And I learned some things about quantizing drums and using flex time across multiple mic positions in, in Logic. So if you want to uh, know more about that, then stick around for the cue breakdown. But I wanna, I wanna talk about remembering that this whole job is supposed to be fun. And this is what, what, really, what really brought it back to me, is uh, Symphobia. Yes, the library Symphobia, which I bang on about over and over on this channel because I really, really like it. Their, their Project Sam is just good people. And they have been updating their library since the beginning, since 2008, I think is when that library came out. And uh, they were recently on like version 1.6. And every time they update the library, they go in, they clean up the sounds, they update the interface, and it's free. They just give it, they just give it away. Well, Last week, they finally released Symphobia 2.0, and it is a quantum leap improvement over Symphobia 1. And they gave it away for free. I mean, the interface is all different. They've clearly sunk a lot of money into developing this. And they, I think they lowered the price of Symphobia. I mean, when I got into Symphobia, I think it was almost 800 bucks. And now it's, I think, $400. And so uh, maybe even a little bit more than that. But they updated their interface and I, I, I loaded up Symphobia. And this, isn't a, this, this vlog isn't about Symphobia. This was, Symphobia was the catalyst. I loaded it up and I just started playing. I just started playing with it. And, and the new interface allowed me to, to find sounds that I, that I knew were in Symphobia, Symphobia, but I had long forgotten and just hadn't used. And because I had added things into my template, if it, like, if it, if it wasn't in my template, then I, I never really kind of dug more into it. And by template, I mean, uh, saving patches in logic. So like instead of loading up contact and browsing for the patch that I needed, I just created a library patch. And then anytime I need some phobia staccato strings, I just load it up out of my library. But this new interface encouraged me to play around. And before I knew it, I was just having fun. And there was a part of me that, that kind of went, Hmm, I remember this guy. I remember what this was like just having fun doing this. And so I started asking myself, well, what was stopping me from having fun? What was getting in the way of having fun? And uh, the first was deadlines and meeting, you know, delivering content that, that people who are paying you money or in a position to help you make money 
delivering those uh, those tracks to them, those cues to them. And as soon as, and I believe this about anything, and anytime you try to take something you really, really enjoy and turn it into a commodity, into something that you want to make a career out of it, then you you run the risk and will likely hit a wall where it kind of stops being front, fun. And it's not that I haven't been enjoying the process. It just that that sense of wonder, that sense of of getting super lost in the time, in time, the flow state. That that was not really. Nah, I don't want to say it wasn't as present because I mean, by the time you make you know forty five dramedy cues that all have pizzicato strings, which I love and which pay the bills, but as soon as you do forty five of those, I mean. I dare say the wonder is is gone. You're not you're not necessarily playing at that point. You're crafting, and I feel strongly about that. And this isn't you know I'm not absolutely not like coming down against craft, and you know my whole artisan mentality. But even artisans have to remember and remind themselves that this is supposed to be fun. So deadlines and 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 deliveries deliverables were getting in the way of fun because I had turned everything into a, into a process. And because deliveries and deadlines were such so present, I felt like I really didn't make time to just explore. I, di- I didn't make time for that. Because if I wasn't in here working on an active queue, or if I wasn't out at a gig, which thankfully that, that gig has closed, parenthetically, the last show, our closing night, closing night got canceled due to COVID, which was so anticlimactic because <laughs> uh, you kind of gear up for closing, you know, and uh, and so that was, that's, that's a whole other thing. I had to go to this st- go to the theater and load out. And it was weird because yeah, anyway, uh, I, I lost track of, of where I was. Um, just having so much going on gigs, deadlines, deliverables that I didn't, I didn't budget time for exploration. And I think I need to do that. And I think I need to do that more in 2022 is make time to explore. Don't, don't overload yourself with deadlines because eventually, if you're like me, eventually those deadlines are the only reason you're really doing it. And again, it's not that I, I'm not enjoying it, but I wouldn't say that I'm having fun. Not the way I was when, when I when I opened up that new Symphobia 2.0 and started playing around. I, I get that sense of wonder a lot of times when I get a new instrument, whether it's Omnisphere or, you know, those, those unfinished patches from the unfinished.co.uk. I, I get that sense of wonder, but I almost immediately start thinking, how am I going to use this? How am I going to use this? And, and how can I turn this into into a deliverable, which is cool, and I love it. But with with Symphobia, because that was such a, it, a, a it's well worn territory, then everything just kind of started opening up. It reminded me of when I got BBCSO for the first time from Spitfire Audio. You 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 are met with possibility, but also that sense of wonder. And before you know it, a couple of hours have gone by and you've just been dinking around, listening to sounds. So 2022 Dave needs to remember that this is supposed to be fun. And how I'm going to do that moving forward, my goal is to budget time to do that. And and I already, I already know this. You know, I'm I am the the household's uh, finance guy, for better or worse. I take care of the bills and everything. And one of the things that I learned early on in doing my budget is 
that I am going to want to, or Shannon and I, we're going to want to go to the movies. We're going to want to buy a game. You know, we're going to want to do these things. And the only way that I found that I could do that is if I specifically budgeted money that I know I'm going to blow. <laughs> if that makes sense. If that's okay to say. We would set aside like $25 out of every paycheck. That was just non-constructive money for games, for entertainment, or for whatever. Because I, I know that, that we're going to want to do that. And if I don't budget for it, if every nickel and dime has to find a home, whether it's it's blasting, you know, extra extra payments into a, a debt or a credit card, or or whether it's tucking it away into savings or whatever, which are all amazing and good. This isn't about that. But if we didn't take just a little bit of money and stick it aside, we would still we would still do those things. We would still buy the games. We would still go to the movies. We would still go out to eat. But it starts eating into other things, other budget line items. And even more importantly, I, this, this little voice, this loop would, this, this low hum in the base of my skull, way in the back of my mind, would be concerned about the money. Even though I know everything's covered, but because I know I'm spending money that we didn't budget, there's a part of me that wasn't allowed to enjoy it as much as I probably should. And it wasn't until we budgeted the $25 out of every paycheck that when we go to the movies and we spend that $25, then you could spend it free of any worry because you've already budgeted. You know that this money is for this, and even if it's completely wasteful and it's the least constructive way to spend that money because you've budgeted for it you're 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 not you're not saddled with should i be doing this to begin with and i know that about project management and i i put in my budget you know that i'm going to like i playing games. I have a weekly standing uh, a game night with some friends of mine from uh, live in Tennessee, live in uh, live in Charlotte, North Carolina. We get together and we play World of Warcraft for two hours every Tuesday night. And it's on my calendar. My calendar also has when I'm writing, when I'm doing emails, when I am, uh, when I'm working on this project, when I'm writing, when I'm lecturing, when I'm working on this very video, this is a line item in my calendar called 52 cues. So I already know about budgeting money for play. I already know about budgeting time for projects. I need to budget time to play in a musical sandbox. And that's what I've not been doing. Because if I'm in the studio here, I'm I'm working. I'm I'm actively working on a deliverable, which are important. Those deliverables are very important. But I need to remind myself that just like I, I set aside money and time to play video games, I need to set time aside in the studio to just explore the space, to just open up a, a new uh, a new library and have fun with it without the goal of turning it into something that I can make money with. That's what I that's what I learned this past week. And that's what I want to try to carry into 2022. What about you? What are some things that you do to keep things fun? That uh, what do you do to remind yourself that this whole idea of making music, remember why you got into it, that that feeling of wonder even as you're making money, what do you do to help kind of uh, keep things uh, keep things fun for you? I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below. I, I make every effort to answer all of uh, the comments. I absolutely read them all, but I, I really do 
appreciate your feedback. So with that in mind, let's take a look at my Q4 week 50. This is called Sneak Snake Snuck, uh, which that's one of the titles that looks like it looks better than it sounds when you say it out loud. It sounds sounds kind of stupid. But uh, when you see Sneak Snake Snuck, uh, I, I think I think it works. Again, the publisher, the publisher dug it. Uh, and so this features Brandon Miller, good friend, a bass player. I mentioned a few videos ago that I had him in in the studio and we recorded for for several hours. And so I got a lot of different tracks. So I'm, I'm going to be mining, mining the gold that he uh, that he left for me. And I'm going to be polishing it up and turning it into the jewels of cues. Okay, my, I'm done with that that metaphor. Um, but also uh, me on drums, featuring those Neumann microphones, and um, and learned a lot about flex time and flex editing multi-track drums. And we're going to talk about that. But uh, let's take a listen to it, and uh, we'll unpack it on the other side. Sneak Snake Snuck, once again, featuring my good friend Brandon Miller on bass. And this, what was interesting about this cue is this one came towards the end. Actually, actually, it's kind of the last third. The first third of the session was um, going through some chord charts, like actually bringing up some some real book things and just uh, kind of massaging the chords and just saying, hey, just just riff on this. We put a click on it and went. The second third of the session was, um, let's just kind of do some more modal stuff, you know, kind of hanging on one chord and then kind of moving moving the harmony. And so that was kind of the the, the second third. The last third of the session was me kind of letting him, letting him go. So I would say, okay, I need music for a scene where a kid is sneaking downstairs trying to steal a cookie and not wake anybody up. And so I did that for a couple of them. You know, you're trying to rob a bank or or something like that. And this is uh this is what he came up with, which reminds me that Sometimes you, you, when you bring good musicians in, yes, do what you came to do. Do have have them play what you want them to play. But if you have time in the session, just cut them loose. Let them bring what they bring to the table, and you might be really, really surprised by the end results. I know I was, and I was really, really happy with this. So this is pitched down, and the reason I pitched the bass down down by by four four half steps was to match my flute my flute my native american flute is a is an f minor pentatonic type of a sound and i didn't want to leave the bass up where it where it is 
which uh all right so that's the original or i'm sorry that's the the transposed this is the original which if i pitched the flute up to match that then i'm not really i don't think that really works it's a little too high i i think So leaving the flute where it's at, bringing the bass down, I think is is the better choice. And it puts it down in F, like F minor type of a sound. With this native flute, which uh, <laughs> ironically, I've, I've already delivered these stems and I forgot to put a compressor on that. Oh well. <laughs> I did do some EQ, uh, and it does have a drenched in reverb and with a little bit of delay, uh, a lot of flutter tonguing, you know that kind of kind of sound. And at first, I I did a lot more with the flute that I ended up. I, I just thought it was too busy. It was too busy my first go around and it, it, I, just, I just pulled it back this is, this is it's too much it's, it's okay but I felt that the uh, the sparser the sparser flute part made me like want to hear more of it, and I thought that was a good thing. the The busier flute part, it was it was too much, and it was overkill, and uh, that's 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 why it's hidden. I, I kept it because I wanted to show you guys, but yeah, less is more. Leave your audience wanting wanting more. All right, I did record some snaps on two and four here. Just. And one quick, one quick uh, recommendation is if you're recording snaps, um, kind of lick, lick your fingers first. That will give you a nice, a nice crisp transient when you're recording snaps. Otherwise, they'll just kind of be a little too dull and thuddy with uh, some vibraphone just these kind of minor augmented diminished sounds kind of going up and down and this is stock logic's uh vibraphone all right and because i just kind of let him go on this uh, I mean, he's not a production music composer, and so he doesn't know necessarily as much about form things. But I did tell him, you know, we kind of need four bar phrases and build it and build it and build it and then kind of pull it back some. And so that's really what we have is just kind of every phrase we add a little bit more, which meant that as I was adding my parts to it, that I had to help really sell that the energy has pushed forward. So you can see the flute gets busier here. The drums get busier as well. But I needed kind of a breakdown. So into my breakdown. Again, he's kind of doing the same thing the whole time. But everything that I added helped create the sense of structure which is what's essentially him just playing the same, same lick over and over. Which gets us into my drums. Now, now my timing wasn't, wasn't the best on this. This was uh, towards the end of a pretty long, long recording session. And I started getting in and flex timing my my tracks, but I noticed that whenever I whenever I flex timed each one individually, it would create 
phasing issues. Because all these mics are in phase, but as soon as I start stretching the time on one, if I don't stretch the time consistently across all of my recorded takes, then it creates a world of problems. But thankfully, Logic has a way to combat that. And that is using groups. And I imagine at some point, I'll probably do a, a deep dive into this, but um, into my, my groups, let me pull up my group settings here. Let me turn that off. Here we are. And so the real, the real key is in your group settings to make sure that editing and quantize locked audio is clicked so that when I grab a node across one, it grabs it consistently across all of the others. And that was the real key. And then you set which one is kind of guiding the quantization. So that's what this little Q button here is for. Because I didn't actually apply a quantization, I just grabbed each transient and as as it was going along, I I manually moved them to make sure that they were in time together. Mainly because one of the things that Brandon was doing is a little inconsistent on whether or not the last note, the bong, bong, Sometimes he anticipated that beat, sometimes he didn't. Okay, so, uh, which left my drums. And, and, and sometimes when I was recording, I because I, I, I didn't like chart it out or anything, I didn't know exactly, is this one that's anticipated, this one that isn't? Uh, and so I had to go in and manually, manually change which ones were anticipated and which ones weren't. And so that created a little bit of an issue. But by setting my, putting each of the tracks that need to be together into a group, you know, by creating a group, going into group settings, and I, I didn't want all the sins and everything to be this, to, to be locked in, but the editing and the quantize lock, that was the real key. And, and I've, I've watched, tons of videos on this and and how some people are like don't ever do quantize flexing and everything i i don't agree logic logic doesn't have the best flex engine that would be ableton's crown to wear but they're definitely definitely come a long way all right so um yeah i might do a deeper dive into that process in a future video uh, specifically next year. And I'll, I'll talk about what next year holds for me, uh, probably in week 52, which is right around the corner. All right, so we're in four bar chunks, starting with just, with as far as the drums, just really sparse cymbal stuff. And as far as the cymbals, this is my, um, my 20 inch K Constantinople ride and a 19 inch K uh, thin crash. And um, K Constantinople hi hats, and so doing doing the uh, those up 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 just me kind of pressing into the into the drum head, doing a, a stick over stick effect. All right, so the next round is just open hi hat, typical you know kind of that kind of thing. And then it needs to really open up and I lay into actually riding. That ride sounds so good. It's gonna drop down. Much more like the beginning with really sparse. And this is an instance where I improvised as I was playing the uh, bup, bup, those those sixteenths, and I reinforced that with my flute. Just really tie it together. All 
All right, and then take, take the whole thing home. The vibraphone gets busier and busier going up and down this chord quality. There's no real chord changes necessarily. But uh, that was the overall vibe of, of the cue. So that was, uh, that was Sneak, Snake, Snuck. Really enjoyed that cue. And it's one of four cues I was delivering for a client looking for this type of either uh, gypsy jazz or moody, jazzy, live drums type of, type of sound. Um, but uh, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed that. I still want to hear all about the things that you do to help keep things fun. This was definitely fun playing live drums, which I haven't tracked much at all. That was certainly, certainly fun for me. Uh, if you liked this video, don't thank me. Thank my patrons. They help keep everything going on here. To be a patron is just one dollar a month and it helps keep the channel going and you get access to my weekly music production live streams uh, and if that's not anything you're interested in you don't have to uh, you can just receive uh, without feeling obligated but if uh, if you enjoy the channel then you can uh, you can support us that way or you can uh, smash that subscribe button and all of that YouTube stuff but that's gonna do it for me today I hope that you had a great week 50 and I look forward to seeing you next week for week 52. Until next time, peace.